Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First things first, if you're new here, please subscribe. You don't have to, of course, but it would really help me out in where I'm trying to get my channel to be. But that aside, today we are going to be chatting about something very personal. It is my uh, my journey, my health, my experience. Once um, a lot of my subscribers will know that I have struggled with a lot of groin related problems after groin surgeries. Um, all stemming from um, having hernia repairs, something which started off, which I would have thought was quite simple, which actually changed my life um, for just coming up to six years now. So huge, really um, huge change in my life um, when, of course, it's happened. Uh, it's changed me as a person. It's taken a lot off me as a person. Um, it's affected my 20s, as I'm sure you'll, you'll, probably, uh, you'll probably agree. Um, when you have... A persistent, prolific health problem keep battering away at you as much as you aim to be positive in every situation in every in every week which rolls on um, one after another. I try to be pers uh, persistently positive and in and yet yeah, and you know what nine times out of ten I get through it and um, and and everything is well. Now you're probably thinking the reason of why I am doing this clip. So I've had a couple of people reach out to me on my channel and ask me how things have go how things are going. And I had one particular person which asked me to share my experience of where I am now. Um, and I've not really been covering it in great depth, actually, because um, I have been going through, especially this, the, the first four months of the year, have been uh, quite difficult, quite sort of up and down, quite tough. Just to give you a bit of a back ground story from it. So back in 2017, um, I'd gone on holiday in the July, and I'll really try and compact this um, into a bit more of a shorter story, but there is, there's lots to it along the way, and if you ever do want to ask me a question, please do leave them down below, and I'll be very open, very, very honest, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it in greater detail. So I had gone on a holiday in June 2017 with the family. Um, I'd fallen over, and I'd got back up. Um, first of all, I thought I broke my hand, thought I broke my thumb, um, I didn't think really no more about it. I was uncomfortable, but I was okay. Um, and I thought I'd pulled sort of my leg possibly from how I'd fallen over. And then we'd done some cycling. And I can't quite remember if we'd done the cycling before or after. Um, and then out of nowhere, I really noticed this real uncomfortable, dull, pull sort of lump in my groin very uncomfortable um, in the lower part of my right groin, um, very uncomfortable in the bend of my leg. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it was it was uncomfortable, but I, I could bear with it. It didn't ruin the holiday, as to speak. And anyway, as I came, I came back off holiday, um, I decided that, I, do you know, if it went away, I wouldn't really bother with it. Uh, it could have been a pull or a strain or anything like that at all, and I was fine. Um, then it was September of that year, I had gone on holiday again, and again with the family, really, really great time. However, we were doing lots of walking, and strangely enough, I could feel this in my leg more. This time, much more prolific, much more of a nuisance, um, and a real bothersome ache, like almost pulling on the bottom of my stomach. Then when I came to come on uh, to come home um, on the plane, something had happened, um, and the hernia had pulled through and was really quite hot, quite horrible, quite disgusting to be quite honest. In my groin, it was in, it was quite a mess. I couldn't walk. Um, I, every time I was putting my foot to the ground, the burning sensation was quite horrific, um, and it was really really difficult. I came back. I got checked out by the doctor. I still persisted to, to work. But it was gradually getting worse. They had um, sent me for some scans and they diagnosed it as a femoral hernia and that I was to get it repaired quickly because it was very risky. Um, I had private medical care insurance at the time, so I was seen very, very quickly. Um, I worked right up as, as far as I could until I became really quite unwell with it. And I remember one day I was talking to a customer. I worked in uh, retail banking, uh, worked in a very big branch, beautiful branch, like a very old fashioned, almost like a temple light building. Um, and uh, I remember talking to a customer in the middle of the banking hall, very busy banking hall, which I used to run. And uh, all of a sudden it all dropped through and it was horrendous, this hot lump of discomfort um and i could barely walk and i think shortly after that uh i had it i had the operation done so in november 2017 i had the first operation done um and i was okay as soon as i came around i noticed i had a, a real awful bladder problem um 
I was needing to go to the bathroom constantly, and I didn't really think too much of it at the time, but it was it was uncomfortable, it was bad. Um, on the day of the surgery, I felt another lump. Um, unfortunately, sort of, again, a few extra pieces to the story after that, they found that I had um, an inguinal hernia, so I had a very, very slow recovery from that, and I had picked up some sort of bug or some sort of germ, and I was really uh, vomiting really quite badly a few days after the surgery, which I'd had, so I didn't get on very well. It took me a very long time to recover. Um, my walking and things was very badly affected, um, but I recovered after, it wasn't weeks, I'm afraid, it was nearly two months, and following that, they confirmed again that I had this under hernia in just up above the one I just had done. So I unfortunately struggled on and it got to the point where I could barely walk again with it and it was affecting everything. And then July 18, I went in um, and the same surgeon, okay, um, I had the next hernia uh, repaired. Uh, both with mesh, the first one was with a mesh comb. Um, and after that, I had really bad bladder problems. Again, I was really, really slow to recover. Um, it was almost like the surgery had aged me. Uh, I, I kind of lost my kind of physical almost um, sharpness, as to speak. Um, my walking, I was really kind of struggling to move around in my recovery, that type of thing. So again, it took me, I would say, nearly another two months, which should have been just a simple hernia operation, um, and I'd had two. Um, Straight away from that surgery, I had a lot of bladder-related problems, I'll be very honest now. Um, I had a lot of incontinence issues, I had a lot of um, holding uh, issues, uh, not being able to hold, urge frequency, that type of thing. Um, I was only, I was, I was, I'm just turned 25, um, horrendous, wrecked my life, ruined my life. Um, a really horrible, horrible time. Um, I did get to a stage where I was uh, physically better, but the, the bladder problem and um, that never went away. Um, and that was really, really bad. 2019 wasn't great. Again, I could feel some sort of dropping sensation in my groin. In the back of my head, I thought, surely there's not a third one. What's happening type thing? What's happening to me? Um, we got through to about halfway throughout the year. I had lots of tests. Um, so I wasn't going to go into that much detail, didn't I? But I feel it's important that you you know and um, to see where I am now today because this all adds up to where I am. And so 2019 got through about partway through the year, um, went to some sort of specialist centre um, quite local to where I live. Um, and I had steroid injections and things and that then gave me the ability to stand up straight again. I wasn't kind of pulling me over with um, the surgery and things, what they'd done. Um, they'd done a scan and they thought that they actually seen uh, something, but they weren't quite sure if it was scar tissue, so they thought that it would be best to let it settle down. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was, um, I'd never really completely got back to how I was before, running around and sort of, sort of how you would expect to be, um, in, in your young to mid twenties. And, um, 2019, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. I had the steroid injections and I was okay for, I would say, about a month and then it all slowly came back. Um, they didn't really do anything too much for me. Horrifically painful to have them done, by the way, as well, um, but I was okay. And um, bladder problem really very much destroyed my life, to be quite honest with you. Lots and lots of problems with that. Trying to manage work, manage study, manage full-time work, um, trying to still... I'm a very positive person, and I will always try to to find a positive in any situation. I think it's so, so easy to find and concentrate on the negative. It's not so easy to find the positive, and I think I'm a true believer that actually there is always somebody worse out there going through something. So for that, that always kept me uh, motivated, switched on. I was very close to my grandmother, my nan, my mum's mum at the time. Um, and she was, and she had Alzheimer's. So I was very much looking after her, um, and with my mum. And we had, we have a very strong bond connection, and that kept me strong. My family were very good, um, but but ultimately it was it was a it was a, it was a battle. It was my battle. Um, 
2020 came, I was having a lot of problems, and I was limping again, so um, it was it was really affecting my walking. Um, 2020, of course, we've got, we were in the pandemic and everything then, um, I had to really put up with, as a lot of people did, um, I had to put up with a lot of problems, um, and throughout that in 2019 is why I had a lot of gastric problems, I had a health scare um, with a gastric issue, uh, esophagus um, problems and things like that. I had major reflux issues. Um, on top of that as well, uh, managing vertigo issues, um, hearing loss, balance related problems as well. So it was a tough time. It was a tough time. 2020, all of those issues, again, I had my bladder operation, which had stemmed from the problems of having the honey related surgeries. Um, I had a um, bladder distension and a rigid cystoscopy and a flexible cystoscopy and several urodynamic studies for why I was having uh, Loss of sensation, bladder related, um, continence issues, urge issues, all of those horrible things. Um, do you know, I owned it and I owned it with confidence. I owned it with dignity. I talked about it when I wanted to. I was always very, very um, I was always very important to talk about it, but very, very dignified in a certain way. And I knew when it was appropriate for me to talk about it, because of course there was down times, there was difficult times. I'd gone from this healthy, well person without any problems to on face value, I was smiling, I was fine. But inside, it was hard. But there was, there was never, ever no giving up. Never, ever no giving up. My faith is hugely important to me. It really gets me through that direction which the Lord above and Jesus provides us on a daily basis. Gives me my strength, gives me my encouragement, gives me my guidance. And we get through it. We get through the tough times. And it was very much like, in my mind, no one's promised a tomorrow. So if we're blessed with another. Let's grab it with both hands and let's enjoy it now. And let's enjoy the right now because tomorrow isn't ours just yet to even worry about. So it was great. I still went on holidays. I still done nice things. Um, there were hard times. And unfortunately, as I went into 2021, uh, growing problems didn't get any better. I had a lot of problems walking. At that time, I'd had to use crutches to walk. Um, and I think that nearly got on for probably nine months, I think. Um, I'd seen a vestibular uh, specialist at the time because my, my foot was going blue. I was having loss of sensation. I'd seen my original surgeon. I'd seen a vestibular specialist. I'd seen another specialist. I can't remember their name. Then I was eventually uh, referred to this specialist um, surgeon um, who specialised in honey related problems um, to the severity which I had, and I think I was told that I was in less than 1% of people went on to have these chronic type of conditions and issues which I had. Um, so I was referred to the specialist clinic, and I seen a whole host of different people, and straight away they said that my original mesh cone, which was to repair my femoral um, hernia, had dislocated, and it had been moving and causing me lots of problems, hence the bladder-related problems. Um, I was having bowel-related problems as well. Um, so all of those problems, and I'll be honest, bathroom-related, it was almost like bowel-related that you took my ability away to um, be able to help assist yourself, basically. Um, so it slowed my system down incredibly. Um, bladder-related, in the reverse, it was almost like that I lost some of the sensation, the frequency, the urge, the continence problems. Um, hard, really, really difficult to, to comprehend and to deal with, but you get through it and you have to work hard at these things and you have to hold on to the small blessings. And I had my groin reconstructed on May 25th, 2021. I had the surgery. Several days later, my nan was taken ill, who was my absolute world. And she died on the 31st of May, 2021. I was just a couple of days out of surgery and I could barely move because it was big surgery. I'd had my groin reconstructed. I'd had a triple neuroctomy. 
uh, had the three nerves cut um, and things removed. I had another hernia which they found um, and that was sorted out for me. Um, all the old mesh was taken out. I had all new mesh. They showed me pictures of it and literally every surface of my groin inside was this different type of um, mesh. But of course, very quickly, that went out the window. Um, before my nan was taken ill, I developed a huge hematoma um, full of gas and liquid, and it was absolutely huge, almost like the size of half a basketball. It was horrifically heavy, painful, um, and I was taken back into the hospital for them to look at that and for them to help me with that. And they picked up a cyst on my kidney I had then. Um, so not great times. And then we had the call on the Sunday that my nan, um, and I see my nan all the time, and um, she's my absolute world, and my it's my mum's mum, and um, very, very close to my mum, very close to mum and dad, but very close to mum, and very, very close to nan. It was almost like I had three parents, and um, we'd had um, we'd had the call on the Sunday around about 12 o'clock that nan was having dinner, and... Um, Something horrific happened, and she'd had a heart attack, and um, we had to get there. So I didn't have a choice. I knew in my mind I needed to be there. So all throughout the day on the Sunday, um, right the way through the, the night, I was sat in a chair beside my nan, holding my nan, talking to my nan, loving, caring, and looking after her. And I wouldn't have had it any other way. wouldn't have had it any other way. And... Um, we lost her at 20 past 12 on Monday 31st, um, which still breaks my heart today, and I think it always will. Um, and it's really, really hard, really, really hard to have gone through all of that and then to have lost Nan at the um, same time as well. Um, she's been my rock as much as my mum has and my dad. Um, so, yeah, really, really tough and hard. So that's all what I went through, health-wise. <clears throat> where am I now? Um, where am I now? So I was fine for, I'd say, six months. Recovery, six months, I was fine. When I do too much, it plays me up, my groin. Um, it still got quite heavy, okay, after that six months. So I wasn't carrying as best health as I was in that, after that six month period. Um, Christmas, fine, absolutely not a problem, but I could feel that if I lifted something a bit too heavy or if I'd done something a bit much, it would play my groin up and it would give me a little bit of a weak leg. Then, what are we? Throughout 2022, on and off, had a few problems where it got a bit swollen, got a bit puffy, got a bit uncomfortable. Had the odd trip, had the odd fall, but nothing like it was at all. But just not quite like how I used to be. My surgeon spoke to me, I had several reviews, told that I'd had so much surgery. I was fortunate that I didn't need any help walking, um, sort of walking aids or anything like that at all. Um, I was very fortunate that I got back what I had got back. Um, and just to be really, really careful. He was very good, very incredible about it, but just to be really, really careful just to be um, really mindful of what you've had done and just to be as healthy as possible, to enjoy life and just to go steady with things. But if there was any other problems, I was to come back. Um, this year, I've been looking after the start of the year for 12 weeks. I've been looking after my uh, mum and making sure my mum's OK. She had major surgery. Um, and now I'm so, so pleased to report that she is healthy and well and back on her feet. Um, and then my leg has started been going downhill, I would say, probably within about the last two months, um, weakness in my leg, sort of the inside of my thigh, uncomfortable scar, but uncomfortable, painful, um, and my leg's been giving out, uh, bladder problems, still very bad, sort of uncomfortable, but manageable, um, because my bladder operation didn't really last too much, but I manage that on a daily basis now. I have overactive bladder syndrome quite badly. Some days I notice it, some days I don't. Some days it rules my life, some days it doesn't. But I'm fine with it, do you know what I mean? I'm absolutely fine with it. Um, and I'm okay, I've got a, 
I've got appointments this year coming up to it. I'm waiting to see a bladder and bowel specialist. On top of that, for about the last 18 months, I've been starting to have seizures. They think that it's migraine related, stress related. So every now and again, I've had one of those, which absolutely floors me on top of like the vertigo. Um, so I usually have to spend a little bit of time in bed resting and recuperating. Um, and then I'm okay again. But I've just got to stay healthy and well. And they've recommended I take aspirin from that. Um, so I'm okay. But I had a fall about six weeks ago in our dining room. And I went down really, really hard. And I'd never fallen so hard. Um, and that's played my leg up. So I'm still sort of coming back on from that. Of course, for having my groin done and all my surgery and everything done. Um, that's taken a lot to come back from that. And then I'd say about three weeks ago, I fell down the stairs. And I live in quite a big house um, and quite a big hallway, whole big stairs and things. And um, you come down and then you've got this arch stair. And then you come down a full staircase. And of course, I got down the first bit, come around the corner and then went flying. Um, leg just gave up the top of the stairs and went absolutely hammering down. So that really put me back a lot. It's twisted my back. It's played my back up quite a lot. Um, I grew very uncomfortable and I've had problems walking around. So I'm still limping, still having a lot of problems with that. But I'm now having specialist mobility physio to help me with that. I'm getting stronger with it. Do you know what I mean? Um, back in January, I was walking fine. So we're in April. So been I've had a couple of falls, um, some migraine seizure events I've had. Um, so I've had a lot going on. So the walking is it, getting better. I'm doing some physio exercises. Um, the last time I had them, unfortunately, it made it worse. But I get myself out every day. I'm walking every day. I'm doing stretches every day. Um, it's certainly not stopping me. These problems do not define me. My health does never, ever define me. On top of all of that, just to give you a quick update, um, hearing loss is stable. So I'm deaf in this ear here. I've got hearing problems on my right ear. Um, and I've been diagnosed with a loss of balance. So, of course, down the stairs, the falls in the dining room, one thing or another, that could be hearing balance. It could be my leg. Um, but overall, yes, there's a lot going on, but I'm handling it fine. I've got appointments all in place. I'm hoping when my leg calms down a bit and I do the physio and I get back onto walking fine again, because I've had the surgery. There's nothing more they can do. The hernias are gone. When I'm walking fine, it's just a little bit uncomfortable every now and again. I've got a little bit of loss of sensation from the triple neurotomy um, and the extent of the amount of how many surgeries I've had. But I'm okay. I'm walking around. Um, uncomfortable with quite a, as they call it, like a bad gait, don't they? Or like a limp. So I've got that at the moment, but I'm working on straightening my walking out, trying to consciously hold my posture and walking straight and doing all the right things for that. So I'm hoping in a couple of weeks that will get better. And I'm under the physiotherapist as well for that. So that's going to be great. Um, we're moving forward. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I manage the hearing problems fine. Do you know what I mean? I'm absolutely fine with that balance. I've just got to be a bit careful, but it doesn't stop me. These things don't define me um, at all. I'm defined from my choices, from my attitude, from you, my ed my education. I'd like to think the goodness I put into the world because I really do try my hardest to do that. Um, as I say, my faith means everything to me. So I'm going well. Um, it's it's okay. Do you know what I mean? It's okay. It's been a bit of a tough year so far at the moment, but it's going to improve. I'm looking forward to a really happy and positive summer, looking at doing some holidays, hopefully for that. Um, yeah, so things are good. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else I need to cover really for my subscribers. Um, I know one of you, one or two of you had asked, and for that, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very, very much. This is just an update. Yes, I know there's been a lot go on, but I think the main thing back from that, from the surgery, which I had in 2021, it's been going okay. So anybody who's been worried about hernias in my experience, please note that that was, I was the less than 1% going to have as many problems as what I did after hernia surgery. And unfortunately it was because I had the incorrect mesh. Um, apparently I shouldn't have had the mesh comb done for my age um, at the time at all. So I've got all the correct mesh in now. I'm through all of that. I've got my groin reconstructed. I'm okay. Unfortunately, the falls which I've had this year have set me back. Otherwise, I would be absolutely flying. I'd be flying on top of everything. So it's it's going great. I started a new job amongst all of that. I've had two promotions throughout all of that. So that's going really well. Um I struggle. I'll be honest, I'm heartbroken about my nan. Um, this May, it's two years. It still feels like it's been two days. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a true positive person in this life. I truly do believe that 
that we we have to, we have to keep going. Nan taught me four things, um, many many things, but four things stand out in my mind. And when I gave my uh, my nan's eulogy at her funeral, the four things was to never ever 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 give up, keep going. Number two, always work hard. Number three, always look your best. Be ready for anything just around the corner. And lastly, family is everything. And you know what? I know I've got a lot of health issues and things in the background, a lot of history, but genuinely, I am well and healthy. Do you know what I mean? I can get about, I can breathe air in my lungs, I can take a walk when I want. I don't have any long-term issues which is going to affect me from, from now on moving forward. Yes, it's been a bit of a rocky um, history of things going on for the last six years. And yes, parts of it did ruin my 20s. But you know what? There was great times as well. I truly do believe. What's the saying? As I, I recently just actually read this. I think it came from the YouTube community that don't dwell so much on yesterday because otherwise you'll miss out on the blessings today. So do you know what? You have to be positive throughout these things. You really, really do. There is somebody always far, far worse off in this world. And all the horrific things and all the people out there, what would choose one blessing they have in this life, their own life, to do bad things, I just so not do under, I don't understand that for the life of me. We have one life, why wouldn't you want to, being positive, helping people, making a difference, supporting others, caring about others, do you know what I mean? Just why wouldn't you want that? So yeah, I could be down on days when it's a bit tough, but there is always somebody out there to show me that actually, do you know what, you've got it good. Concentrate on the blessings in your life. There's so much. There is light in the darkest of times. Sometimes we've just got to find it and take a moment to find it. Okay, so on that note, thank you. And you know what? I hope that was a meaningful update. It was great to get all that off my chest, I have to admit. And as I say, I get down days, but I, I'm very, very quick to pull myself out of that because life is a blessing. Um, it really, really is. And we've just got to concentrate on those. Um, on those blessings. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I really hope that's answered a lot of questions. I hope you found that interesting. I know it's a bit of a long clip here, but um, it's huge and meaningful to do, and it really does mean the world. So thank you very much. God bless. Take great care. Thank you for being here. And as I said, if you do want to ask any questions, please leave them down below, and I'll do my utmost best to come back to you as quickly as I can. Okay, last time I'm going to say, God bless. Take great care, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye for now.